Welcome to this shortwave radio channel. And one of the things that uh, people have a hard time when they get to shortwave listening is knowing what actually they're listening to. And there are several websites that I use. Um, one which I like because I like lists uh, will be EIBI space. But EIBI space, it's, you know, text based. You got to kind of understand the different. Uh, signification of the the listing there so when you put you know a listing like this you're like yeah what does it mean and it's not always easy it's a little cryptic but you can actually use uh, also something that um, I know a lot of you use and it's the shortwave.info website this one what is nice is that it actually gives you you know a map with the transmitters it gives you a search, so you can search for something. So, for example, if I'm listening right now to 6070, it's in English. Um, you know, you could actually what, find what station it is by typing here the frequency. So, 6070, and then you click the Now button, and it's going to actually give you a list of stations that use 6070. And one of them is here near Montreal, where I am, with uh, Toronto. And you'll see that you'll have some stations. And notice that there's a red color for the ones that are in our time zone. That means the ones you see here are possibly the ones that could be possible. There's three of them in red. The rest is not in red because they're not in our time. So, what could it be? There's Radio Capital in Portuguese, there's CFRX Toronto in English, and there's Channel 292 in Germany. And they are in, uh, the only one in English is CFRX Toronto. So, you would know that, well, it must be CFRX, the only one in English, which is right in my case. Uh, that's where language is very important. If you can identify a language, and you know, identifying doesn't mean you have to understand it. I don't understand Japanese, I don't understand Chinese, but I can make a difference just by listening to the intonations. This is something you acquire with time. As time goes by, you'll actually learn to make a difference between Portuguese, between Spanish, uh, between Chinese and Korean and uh, Japanese. There are slight differences that actually, at, you know, when time goes by, you're like, yeah, okay, no, that's not this language. It must be this language. It is important to know that because the language will help you a lot in cases where there are more than one station on the frequency at the same time. In this case, knowing that it's English, it pretty much tells me that's the one. Uh, but there were three possibilities. And that happens often. The other thing also is to look at where they're transmitting, where you are. Uh, I'm going to have a little bit more in the beginner series of the theory of radio listening and, you know, trying to know, is it possible that I could hear this station at this time? Because there are times when, no, it's not possible that you would hear that station. And because of the frequency and the time that you're listening. So there's all sorts of things that hint to where and what you're listening to. So in this case, that's what it is. You know, um, if I'd go to 98.30, where right now it's, I believe, Voice of Turkey. So Voice of Turkey with some music. Pretty strong, too. Now, suppose you don't know it's Voice of Turkey. Then what would you do? You'd simply go to the same, same website, um, shortwave.info, on the find a broadcast on the frequency. I would type 98.30. And of course, I would click the Now button so that it actually searches and gives me what it could be. Now, let's go down. Tells me that there's a couple of possibilities. 9830, something in China, possibly. 9830, something in the uh, Eastern Europe part. So let's check it out and look at what's possible. And it tells you here in red, one again, once again, two possibilities. This is where you got to focus. What's not in red is not something transmitting right now. What's in red it is. Then, Voice of Turkey right now is in English, so of course, pretty much know that it's English. That is Voice of Turkey since of the English language. 
also hints. Does that sound like Chinese music? No, it doesn't. So, you know, you've got to use all the hints that you have of the listening experience. Don't jump to conclusions because that's the worst thing you can do on shortwave. Oh, I'm listening to that thing. No, maybe not. Try to find as much hints as possible and, you know, ask for help. Like on the Facebook group, you can ask for help. What do you think this is? I'm just listening. It's always very important if you are asking what could this be because you can't identify it. Your location, the date, and the time in UTC. It's extremely important because your location will help us know what is possible where you live because it's not the same thing where I live. The time in UTC to know which broadcast it could be. And of course the date is could be useful in some cases also because of the different stations that broadcast in um, sometimes only on specific days on specific languages. So these are a few ints. I'm going to share the uh, link to the two websites that I've shown here. Uh, EIBI Space, which is lists, uh, which is in time. So if you go to EIBI Space, you have two lists here. So when you enter the website, you have the left side, which is the uh, frequencies by time. So you can look at the broadcast by time and try to learn. So, you know, it's, it's a question of learning it, how it works. So for example, here, zero to zero one on Friday, CNR one jammer, Friar Drake, M Mandarin, F for the far East and the frequency. But these are abbreviations you'll learn over time. And of course you have the list and the list is also can be used to uh, identify what's the station. So you can use the find functionality of your browser and go to, for example, 9830, where Voice of Turkey. Uh, the reason I keep EIVI space, even though it's more complex for most people, is because in general it has a tendency to be more accurate than the shortwave.info. But the shortwave.info, for ease of use, it wins. It's easier to find stuff, it's easier to understand and see, even on the world map, where the transmitter sites are. So there's a lot of advantages also for using shortwave.info. So both websites in the description below. Hope that this video helps you kind of, you know, pinpoint and identify a little bit more what you're listening to on shortwave. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe, give us thumbs up. Thank you for watching.